My name is Steven Saffold and I'm a coastal Chumash descendant of Santa Barbara. I am, have grown up fishing and camping and hiking and practicing archery in Southern California. In 2004, I became interested in the art of flint napping. I had seen many beautiful Native American arrows on, in magazines, books, and movies, and I wanted to start making some for myself. And so I started researching through my dad's books. My dad is a bow maker in Southern California and very experienced with it. And so I looked through one of his books and I saw that you have to break them and nap them, known as the art of flint napping. I discovered that there were landscape rocks in my neighborhood that were also fused shale, a glassy rock that was also used by my Chumash ancestors. So I picked some that I found off the neighbor's yard and I took them back to my garage and I grabbed a hammer and put them on the ground and hit them until they broke into little flakes. And then I took a little flake and used the flattened end of a brass tube to chip it into my first arrowhead. And that's when I first became fascinated with the art of flint napping. We first made tools millions of years ago when we first came out of the trees and we needed to make chopping tools to help us break into bones so we can get the marrow. These were hand axes and little pebble tools that we first used. We no longer have use for these stone tools, but we still reproduce them as an art form and there are people who still hunt with them as well. The Chumash utilize stone tools for a number of different reasons. We use sandstone mortars and pestles for grinding our acorns. One of the stones that we used was Franciscan chert to make arrowheads and atlatl dart points from. And we also use Monterey chert, which is an oil-based chert that you can find sometimes along the coast. And once you break into it, it smells like oil. And that one comes with a lot of chalk layers and can be very tough sometimes. When we wanted obsidian, we had to go to the Mojave and trade with the Yokuts and the Mojave. And that is a real suitable stone that's good for making arrowheads and spear points and at atlatl dart points. It, you can make an arrowhead very easily from it as opposed to using tough material like flint and chert. And it was highly sought after by all California Indian tribes. So it took me about 10 years to really perfect the art of flint napping. And still to this day, I break points and bust notches and sometimes still cut myself. But it's all a part of the learning process and all a part of flint napping. And it's what all of our ancestors had to go through. I've had a lot of fun uh, making these things and now to the point where I sell them and I feel a connection with my my ancestors because they were making these for trade and for survival and I feel as though I in some way make these in the same fashion. Now since we can mail flint and rock and material all over the place I have access to Texas flint and Ohio flint and Jasper from all over the world. I like to include our artwork into other pieces as well. If I have flint from another region, I can make a Chumash style point from it. And to me, that means that I'm still here doing the artwork in a different form.